Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. In our last video I discussed the presence of unstable elements in Shabilsky's star and the hurdle that poses for the standard model. Today I wish to turn my attention to the hydrogen phase diagram. I have linked several important papers on the subject below. Recently a new phase diagram was proposed. For the sake of discussion, I have simplified the diagram relative to what is found in the paper. The y-axis corresponds to the temperature in Kelvin and the x-axis to pressure in gigapascals. One gigapascal is equal to about 9,870 atmospheres at sea level, so the x-axis on the graph is displaying tremendous pressures. I have removed all data points and kept only the major regions on the diagram in order to emphasize the key aspects of today's discussion. The generation of a phase diagram at these temperatures and pressures for hydrogen is not a simple task. Often diamond anvils are used where hydrogen is being compressed between the faces of two diamonds. But at high pressures even diamond anvils can fracture, making the pressures above 300 gigapascals hard to achieve. There is a link below on the subject. Clearly hydrogen is extremely difficult to handle at elevated pressures and temperatures. Dense hydrogen likes to diffuse into adjacent structures and can be extremely reactive. That makes the study of the top and the right portions of the diagram difficult. Still, two general approaches are taken. First, one can remain at low temperatures and progressively increase the pressure. Alternatively, one can remain at low pressures and with sample heating, increase the temperature. Both approaches are now being used in the laboratory. At the same time, remember, it is difficult to properly measure extreme pressures and temperatures on small samples. As a result, considerable controversy exists in the scientific community relative to many aspects of the hydrogen phase diagram. Nonetheless, almost everyone agrees on the general features. If one examines this shaded lower left region, one can find various forms of hydrogen in non-metallic state. This section of the diagram is extremely complex and ill-defined in portions as no less than five solid forms of molecular diatomic hydrogen can be found within it, besides the liquid and gaseous forms. Of the five solid forms, not one structure has yet to be defined, as this region of the phase diagram is typically reached with diamond anvil studies. The samples are very small and not very amiable to structural determination with neutron or x-ray bombardment. In any case, this region has little relevance in helping us to understand the sun. At very high pressures but low temperatures on the lower right, one can find regions where hydrogen is predicted to exist first as a solid semi-metal and then as a solid metal. In the farthest region on the right, the hydrogen molecule is fully dissociated. The solid is said to contain only atomic hydrogen. The semi-metal region is thought to be molecular in nature. Just above the region on the left at low pressures, there is a portion of the diagram where hydrogen is said to act as an insulating fluid. In this video I introduce the concept of insulators and metals by discussing the valence and conduction bands in hydrogen. If you have not seen that video, take a look. As a brief recap, when hydrogen is at relatively low pressures and temperatures, its electrons reside in the valence band and one has molecular diatomic hydrogen. A conduction band is sitting high above the valence band. But under normal conditions, electrons are unable to reach it. That is why hydrogen is an insulator at lower temperatures and pressures. Now when pressure is increased, the conduction band will begin to fall, making it easier for the valence electrons to jump into this band with increasing temperature. If this happens when the valence and conduction bands are still separated in energy, one gets a semiconductor. When the conduction band first reaches the valence band, one gets a semimetal. With even more pressure, one gets a metal as the conduction band falls to the energy level of the valence band. In our phase diagram, the region where the hydrogen acts as an insulating fluid is still at low pressures, but now the temperatures are approaching photospheric levels. Just above the insulating fluid region, hydrogen is said to become a semiconducting liquid or semimetal. Note that the photosphere would be included in this temperature region. I have stated that the photosphere should correspond to hexagonal planar type 1 metallic hydrogen which acts as a semi-metal. This has been presented in these papers and videos linked below. As pressures are increased within the solar interior one would get a fully metallic state. 
This is easy to see on the diagram. With increasing pressure, one moves from the semi-metallic region to the fully metallic one. I have stated that metallic hydrogen is made in the solar interior, yet rises to the level of the photosphere once made. Its structure then changes slightly from a fully metallic hexagonal planar lattice to a more relaxed hexagonal planar lattice, which is now a semi-metal. This is completely in keeping with the expectation that, with increased pressure, semi-metallic hydrogen can be converted to the fully metallic form. This process can be reversed as the pressure is lowered. At the same time, there is an expectation that, once the metallic form of hydrogen is made in the solar interior, its metallic nature is preserved at the surface given these elevated temperatures. The lattice relaxes somewhat and moves from a metal to a semi-metal. This semi-metal might be metastable, requiring elevated pressures to be formed, but able to exist at lower pressures once formed. It has been argued in this work that fully metallic hydrogen formed at high pressures might be metastable and remain metallic at lower pressures. Recently, under ambient conditions on Earth, this has been disputed theoretically. It is claimed that metallic hydrogen will not remain metastable and will lose its metallic character. However, the situation does not apply to elevated temperatures. At low temperatures, hydrogen has a desire to exist in molecular form. This makes metastability difficult to achieve under those conditions. However, at elevated temperatures, hydrogen wants to exist in atomic form, and that facilitates the preservation of the metallic state. As a result, it is reasonable to expect that metallic hydrogen formed at high temperatures and pressures relaxes to a semi-metallic state on the photosphere given less pressure there. However, this semi-metallic state, once adopted, remains metastable. Formed at elevated pressures, it can continue to exist on the photosphere even when elevated pressures are completely removed because the temperatures remain high. Now there is a reason why I have advanced the hexagonal planar structure for type 1 metallic hydrogen on the photosphere. This structure exactly parallels the structure of graphite on Earth, ensuring that a proper lattice exists to produce the visible spectrum of the Sun. Professor Neil Ashcroft was the first to highlight that dense hydrogen in hexagonal planar form should behave much like graphite relative to its emissive character, as one can learn in this paper, which he forwarded to me after reading my 40 proofs paper. That all being said, let us now examine this simplified phase diagram. The full diagram is available through the Berkeley website linked below. This time, temperature in Kelvin on the y-axis is plotted against density on the x-axis. The average density of the sun is 1.4 grams per centimeter cubed. That corresponds to this position on the plot. One can see that if the body of the sun is comprised of condensed matter with a relatively uniform density throughout, it will exist as a metallic fluid or solid. Remember, in this history paper, I recounted how James Jeans had advanced that the sun might be an essentially incompressible liquid and possess a solar body with a relatively uniform density. In fact, Chandra Shekhar spent a great deal of his life studying rotating liquid masses. His work on the subject was an extension of similar treatment by many of the astronomers which preceded him. Chandra Shekhar did not completely dismiss the idea that the stars might be essentially incompressible rotating liquid masses. In any event, I dispute the validity of this line since we know that the Sun's core experiences solid body rotation as we saw in this video. At elevated temperatures and pressures, this indicates that hydrogen remains in condensed metallic form. It does not become a gaseous plasma in the solar interior, as gaseous plasma cannot undergo solid body rotation. Now the gaseous models of the Sun place the density of the photosphere in this position on the plot. Obviously at such densities one cannot have a metallic solid or liquid. So the question is, who is correct? Is the photospheric density high or is it almost a vacuum like in the standard solar model? In the end, there is not a single line of scientific observation supporting the idea that the body of the Sun can be a gaseous plasma. In fact, no evidence is ever produced by the astronomers for such a claim. Their evidence is purely theoretical and dates back to the 1860s when men like Hervé Fay first tried to argue that the photosphere was just an imaginary layer, as one can learn in this paper. Astronomers have just never evolved past Fay's unjustified claim. In contrast, the evidence that the body of the Sun is condensed matter is overwhelming, as I highlight in this paper. Let's review a few of the many proofs and keep score of what the observational evidence supports. The metallic hydrogen solar model or the standard solar model. 
Links to the videos where each of these are discussed are provided below. First, the Sun has an average density of 1.4 grams per centimeter cubed, as I just mentioned. It would have been much better for the standard model if the average solar density was something like 0.001 grams per centimeter cubed, the density of a dense gas. But that is just not the case. The average density of the solar body supports the idea that it is condensed matter. Then we have the fact that the core of the Sun experiences solid body rotation, as just mentioned, as observed using helioseismology. Solid body rotation is a feature of condensed matter. We also have the presence of the tachocline layer in the Sun and shear forces at that level. The need for a real surface or a severe discontinuity in density in this region once again supports condensed matter. Next, consider that the Sun is ringing like a bell, acts as a resonant cavity, and is able to sustain capillary waves on its surface. All of these support condensed matter. Capillary waves cannot exist in a gas. Solar granules provide the next line of evidence. Granules exhibit Baynard convection, which is a surface-driven process, a feature of condensed matter. Then we have all the evidence for a condensed solar surface, including visual observation of a surface, which the astronomers must deny as an optical illusion. Of course, there is also the continuous solar spectrum, the directional spectral emissivity of the surface, and the central brightness of the disk. All three of these features point to condensed matter, as explained previously in detail in these videos. The presence of orthogonal displacement of matter in the photosphere and in the atmosphere above it also provides evidence for condensed matter. These orthogonal displacements are evidence of a change in phase, from condensed matter to gaseous. Next, we see the presence of tornadic activity above the solar surface and the impact of material falling back onto the surface after coronal mass ejections. Then we have the presence of magnetic fields and the need for condensed matter to carry the strong currents needed to generate them. We also have the metallic character of sunspots with their high magnetic fields. Of course, there is a presence of canyon-like 3D features on the surface, the clear presence of structural elements on the photosphere, and the list goes on and on. In fact, to claim that the body of the Sun is a gaseous plasma when confronted with all these facts demonstrates the height to which some will go to support the standard model, despite all the evidence that it is simply wrong. So getting back to our diagram, it is clear that the proper region of interest for the solar body is at a density near 1 gram per centimeter cube. That is the position for semi-metallic and metallic hydrogen. The Sun is not a gaseous plasma. All the evidence points to metallic hydrogen for the Sun's composition, including the phase diagram of hydrogen itself. In contrast, not one line of observational evidence is more easily explained by invoking the idea that the Sun is a gaseous plasma. The objective reality is that the Sun is in fact condensed matter. Well, that is all for today. If you enjoyed the video, promote the channel, mention the videos to your friends and your local astronomy club, support me with a like, and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.